Hello, good evening, Anna Glavinsky, aka the Christmas Joker here, here to host Break the Cycle Christmas Games for Cycling UK. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us. Cycling UK are the nation's charity representing cyclists, making the roads safer for all, making cycling more accessible for everybody and making the UK more of a cycling nation. We believe the more people on bikes, the cleaner and less congested our cities, the healthier our air and the happier the population. So if you're somebody who supports this ethos, stay right here because we're going to be showing you a load more of the work that we do as a charity. But it's all under wraps as an entertainment show. It's going to be so much fun, loads of fun and games coming this evening with some amazing star guests. Joining me as a host, we have got the quiz master today, who is Lorraine Dixon. Hello, Hi, Lorraine. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Hello, happy Christmas. How are you doing today? I'm doing fine. And I wanted to say, I got this message from Santa that no one's on the naughty step this year. Isn't that good news? That's really good, but it's also not what I heard. Ooh. I'm not sure that Santa's been saying the same thing to both of us. Oh, dear. Although Santa's a bit suspect because I remember Santa came to visit me uh, here in Brum, and uh, I asked him if I'd been a good girl, and he said I hadn't been. And I thought, that's a bit questionable because I'm always good. Anyway, you are a ride leader, a climatic, oh, and a DJ. You've got a lot of strings to your bows. Lorraine, what's your role here tonight? So I'm quiz master. So that means I'll be answering the questions. I'll be giving the answers. And if the teams uh, are very nice to me, then I might let them win. <laughs> Not that there is any underground backhandedness going on at all. This is all above board. And also just quickly, the role of cycling in your life, what does it mean to you? Cycling is freedom. It always has been since I was a kid. Um, like a lot of the people looking in right now, I started riding as a youngster. Um, and that was just freedom going anywhere and everywhere. And it was absolutely wonderful. Um, I continued as a teenager when I went off to college and uni. And even though I drove and, and all the rest of it, I still carried on uh, riding, commuting, and as well as doing things like sportives. And latterly, I've wanted to um, try and understand how bikes work. So I've been doing one or two uh, bike mechanic courses and I've been really, really enjoying that. I love the beauty of the bike, never mind the freedom that it gives you. <laughs> so fair to say, I think cycling has a big and positive role in your life. So I think we can all assume that you're a big supporter of Cycling UK's messages. We're gonna go into a video right now, just before we kick off with the games and the star guests to show a little bit of the type of work that we do here at Cycling UK. When I came up here, initially it was really difficult, um, just because I didn't know anyone, I didn't have the same support around me, um, and I felt quite isolated initially. Um, spent the first couple of months really not knowing what to do with myself, and I was working freelance, so I was going back and forth to Glasgow a lot, and I just I wasn't meeting people, I wasn't here enough and I knew I had to find a way of working through things. And it was around about that time that my friend Hayley had mentioned Wheel Nest to me. You know, as soon as I signed up, I thought I'm definitely going to be out in the social cycles. And so I have, I've went out in every one that I can go on. At first I kind of went with a lot of anxiety and then I had to kind of remind myself that everyone was there for not the same reasons, but everyone was coming from a place of vulnerability and difficulty. And um, actually, I, you know, sometimes it, it's hard when you're in your own headspace with these problems and issues to remember that actually you're you aren't alone i know on a monday i can go out and cycle with some people and it just it makes a difference having just a little bit of social interaction you know just that wee bit and some of us will maybe carry on our cycle after it has been such a a fantastic thing for me to be able to walk into since i've got up here i don't really know what i would have done without it to be honest 
to know that there's the canal rides and you know there's events every so often that you can meet up with everyone and it just feels like it kind of came together in a really natural way and can't quite believe it sometimes but so lucky and so grateful for it you know. I just found myself nodding along with her at the end when she was like, you know, because I think so many of us as cyclists can relate to how important cycling is to our local communities and that connection with our local communities. And if anyone else is a supporter of that message and would like to roll out more cycling projects of that kind around the UK, then we are accepting donations tonight. To donate five pounds, you can text cycle to 70970 or to donate £10, you can text CYCLE to 70191. I was going to say this once, um, it's got to be said, fundraising payments and donations will be uh, processed and administered by the National Funding Scheme operating as donate. Text will be charged at your standard network weight, uh, rate. For terms and conditions, see easydonate.org. Anyway, time to get on with the fun and games. We are going Woo! to welcome our first team of star guests onto the screen. Could Red Team join us now? We have got Rebecca Charlton and the one and only Adam Blythe. Hi, guys. How are you doing? Woo! All good, thank you. Very well, thank you. Yeah, you're looking very, very festive. I think you're going to be perhaps on the spot for being the smartest team and the sparkliest team. Um, Adam, tell us a little bit about you and your career and your background in cycling. Uh, I was professional for 10 years uh, at World Tour level. I dropped down halfway through that, won some things along the way. Um, but yeah, I just had a, I had a great career, run some races, did what I love. And now I'm a pundit um, and a bit of a commentator in cycling, which I, I think I like. I almost enjoy it a little bit more than bike racing at the minute because I, I know so much about it and it really is my passion so I can talk very openly about it and I, I really do enjoy that so that's where I'm at but cycling for me is just um, it's a massive help mentally um, but it's just for enjoyment I, I absolutely love it and it's, without it I'd be lost and in a, in a difficult place I think. That's amazing, actually. I was just about to ask you know, about the next steps of your career and being a pundit. And so you've answered that, but do you think that that knowledge is going to help you into the top spot tonight? I don't know why you're, uh, why you're laughing, Rebecca. <laughs> <laughs> uh, probably not, no. No, probably not. I've, um, Ned, actually, this isn't a, a drop, but Ned actually sent me this, and I've got this next to me to um, just read quickly and hopefully find the information I need for these questions. <laughs> I've also got an Alexa just next to me, so I'm going to put that on and try and, like, mine little things of, like, Alexa, what is the answer to this? <laughs> <laughs> Lorraine, you're going to be cracking down on that, aren't you? Absolutely, except what? if the flattering is very nice. <laughs> I was going to say that hat is on point. You're looking beautiful tonight. Oh gosh, you look stunning, I'm Ray. Feeling, you know, I, you know, it's. I'm feeling so fine. Thank you so much. Yeah, you Not look bad. fine. Not I bad. Think that's so <laughs> Rebecca, I didn't think that you'd have to resort to flattery. You've got a great background in cycling. Surely you're going to know tons of stuff. <laughs> Well, my background, I started racing at the age of about seven, retired at about 12, um, now in journalism. So in theory, you know, Adam and I should be the dream team, but this is some lineup for the quiz. We're quite nervous, actually. What do you mean should be? We are. <laughs> Sorry, I need to improve my fighting talk, don't I? Yeah. <laughs> you guys have come up pretty well on the Twitter poll, actually, on who, who the public think are going to win. People I just have to say, you guys have some knowledge. I'm a kept voting. We just <laughs> refresh. Yeah. Um, Adam, what are you drinking? Uh, I've just got a bit of white wine, actually. I was going to go with red, as that's our team colour. But if I spill it, I've, I've not worn this jacket in a long time, and I've realised there's a lot of drink stains on it already, so I don't want to add to them and make it worse by drinking red wine. So I'm on white wine. Uh, nice choice, nice choice. I'm on the bubbly. Rebecca, you? You've been a good girl? Um, I have babies. Ooh, wow, wow, you've gone all out in the martini glass. Anyone who's drinking at home, drop it into the comments. We'd love to hear from you. 
And we're gonna get going with round one. So this is a timed round, Q&A. You've got three minutes on the clock. The clock. Well, what are we going now? We're, going to, we're actually gonna start playing the game, yes. Man, right. You right. ready? Okay. This is like the moment where you're on the start line and the commissaire is just gonna go through a quick recap of the rules and you're just like, yeah. points ready to go. Do we have to write this down, our answers, or we just tell you the answers? Uh, wait, and I'll tell you what you have to do. Right, this is it. <laughs> okay, sorry. There we go. <laughs> um, so you've got three minutes on the clock. We're going to be, well, Lorraine is going to be throwing questions at you quick fire. The more you answer correctly, the more points you get. You get one point for every correct answer. You're allowed to pass. Move on to the next question. If you want to stop the clock and ask the audience, you can use your help paddle. Rebecca, do you want to just show that paddle? Um, Adam, you'll have to raise your hand. So I'll stop the clock and ask the audience and see if you want to use their answers. You only get to use ask the audience once each, so twice per team throughout the whole competition. So use it wisely, whole competition. Can we buy more? <laughs> In, oh. We can we have, maybe there could be bartering. Yeah, yeah I mean, you can donate to Cycling UK, as many of the audience are doing so generously, and maybe we'll be able to sneak in a little extra help paddle for you. Anyway, yeah, should we go on with this? Who's excited? I think you're nervous. You I'm don't know so what your tactic is. Yeah. You're just playing for time, aren't you? The longer you keep us talking. No, no, no. <laughs> what bike is that in the background there? Looks lovely. <laughs> Anna, have we complimented you yet? We'd love your makeup. Right, three minutes. Lorraine, are you ready? Yes, I am. Starts now. How many Olympic gold medals has Jason Kenny won? Eight. That's wrong. Six. Six. Um, <laughs> who is the current president of Cycling UK? John Snow. Correct. Uh, nickname, which rider was referred to as the cannibal? Eddie Merckx. Correct. Maths, what do you get if you multiply the number of riders in a Madison by the number of stages traditionally held uh, uh, at the Paris-Nice race? I'll say Ooh. that again. What do you get if you multiply the number of riders in a Madison by the number of stages traditionally held in the Paris knee race, knee race. 12, 12, 12. No, I'm sorry, it's 16. It's two in the Madison time, eight stages. Next question In which year did BMX debut as an Olympic sport? 2012. Oh, what a shame. 2008. True or false? The largest rideable bicycle has a wheel diameter of 3.3 meters. Is that a question? <laughs> is that a question? <laughs> yes, true. it is. That is right. It, I guess it's a, it's, it's a statement and it's whether it's true or false. And true. it is the largest rideable bicycle has a wheel di diameter of 3.3 meters. True or false? True. Should we go through? Yes, you're right. It is true. It was built by Didi Stempf from Germany. Uh, which country has the highest number of bicycles per capita of any country? Should we go with Holland, Rebecca? <laughs> yes, that's absolutely right. Who holds the record for spending the most days in yellow, 29, without ever winning the Tour de France? Ooh. Is... I think this might be uh, Alaphilippe. No, it's not. Um, I, don't, I have no idea. Oh, it's Fabian Cancellara. Who rolled the last steel frame bike to victory in the Tour de France? Oh, my God. Sorry, could you repeat the question? Who rolled the last steel bike, frame bike to victory in the Tour de France? Pass. Bjarne Reeves. Uh, I'll come back to that. Which two cyclists oh. have prominent roles in the London 2012 Olympics opening ceremony? Bradley Wiggins and Chris Hoy. Very good. Which is the oldest cycling club in the UK? 10 seconds. <laughs> Cardiff. 
Nope, the Pickwick Bicycle Club, founded yeah. in 1817. How um, did you not get that? How did you not get that one? Pickwick Cycling Club? There we go. You passed on one question. You passed on one question. The person who rode the last steel frame bike to victory in the Tour de France was Miguel Indurain in 1993. I think this is rigged. Really? I kept talking over the end of the question. <laughs> really? That says more about you than anyone else, like though, that. doesn't it, Rebecca? I mean, they were very good questions. Oh, thank you. I love them, Lorraine. You, you explain them beautifully. You did such an amazing job. <laughs> absolutely fantastic. You did. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Because before I'm I start very warm. Up. I'm feeling very warm. Yes, you, you're doing very well, Adam. I'm going to throw yeah. up my wine glass if we carry on with this. So let's get rid of the red team and bring on the blue team. Oh, my life. Manny. Hey. Manny. 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 We're, in, we're in trouble. We're in a lot of trouble. I know, um, I know, Ned. Oh. This is high level questioning. <laughs> but I was Ned. nervous beforehand. I'm in bits now. I'm in absolute pieces here. Adam was using your book as his encyclopedia, the one that you wrote. Everyone sees you as the fountain of all knowledge. Yeah, but I didn't memorise it, did I? Or, or entirely write all of it, if I'm totally honest. I was just the editor. Crikey. Now, anyway, no, come on, Manny, we've got this. We've got this. But just before we go into no, the round, we're just going to give the audience a little bit of a background about you guys and your lives in cycling. Um, Ned, we'll start with you. You're a well-known face and voice within cycling. Um, just tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, I fell off my bike in September and smashed my arm to bits. Um, uh, <laughs> I, I fell, yeah, I rode my bike into a moat of a castle, and um, that was that was painful. Uh, but uh, just in the last week or two, I've got back on my bike and I use my bike uh, pretty much every day. It's one of my favourite objects in the world, and uh, I'm a big fan of what you guys do at Cycling UK. And I've often off and on, I've been doing quite a lot with you guys um down the years so uh get your money out get texting and get those fivers coming in because that's kind of what this is all about as well as having a bit of a laugh and lorraine also i think you're doing a brilliant job oh thank you Ned. i actually, uh, I actually think, really I think i think slightly even more positively towards how you're doing your job than, than adam even expressed uh, you know what i'm feeling that ned i really am i'm feeling good. that good yeah keep it going yeah, good. that's right. good. Yeah. Great, great. So now that everybody knows all about your injuries, and thank you as well for supporting Cycling UK's work. Uh, we're going to move on to Manny. Um, tell us about your cause oh, and your mission, Cycling. Thank you, Anna. I thought you'd never ask. I mean, I'm the greatest <laughs> cyclist to have never won the Tour de France. Um, <laughs> you know, it's just a small little matter of fact, but Hey, no, I'm joking. Um, I'm just an average cyclist. My sort of biggest achievement was um, founding the Black Cyclist Network, which is basically a cycling club aimed at encouraging, you know, riders of color to get into cycling. We are all about getting people into cycling. We are a progressive group, uh, very welcoming space. So we have white riders, black riders. It doesn't matter. The idea is to create a welcoming home, a welcoming atmosphere for riders who would not normally sort of get into cycling or, or would find it a bit difficult to get into into cycling. So that that's basically me in a nutshell. Um, I race every now and again. <laughs> oh, and I yeah, forgot to say, also, my biggest highlight was yeah. actually getting Ned, getting Ned to, <laughs> to come with me at, um, at one race I did at um, Brooklyn Spa last year yeah. at a tour series. That was the first time we met. By the way, um, may I say, Manny's got, you've got the best kit knocking around bar none, haven't you, at the moment as well? Just if you've ever seen any of Manny's oh, cycling club oh. on the road, you'll recognise her. They're pretty cool. Thank you, yeah. Thank you. They're, they're Guys, almost as, as lovely as Lorraine's outfit. I must say, Lorraine, it's almost as lovely as your outfit. It's got nothing on your outfit whatsoever. And I'm going to Oh, you. Manny, I'm feeling that. Oh, <laughs> I'm also feeling that cat, Manny. I'm feeling that cap. <laughs> Lorraine says she likes your cap, Manny. What are you going to do about it? Manny, don't freeze. <laughs> this is not the time. Manny, 
Sort your internet out. Stop buffering. <laughs> 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 Is that 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 really image, though? <laughs> I know what Manny's saying. He's not giving you a hat. No. Oh, no. This is a disaster. And then a there was one. A complete disaster. Uh, I mean, I think Manny's probably delighted because by all accounts, he's going to be leaning on you very heavily for the answers. What we can do quickly is we'll introduce the yellow team and hopefully Manny can come back in the meantime for right. your competition. How does that sound, Ned? It sounds great, yeah, sounds great. Yeah. Let's hope back. this isn't a cop-out where he's just Hashtag. panicked. <laughs> Hashtag pray for money. <laughs> Hashtag bring back money. Okay, let's get the yellow team onto the screen and we're gonna say hello to you guys. We have Orla Chenoui and Katie Archibald. Hello. Hello. Even. Yeah, how you doing? There's a lot of red going on. I like this, even though you're team. Yeah. We're complimenting each other as the all-female team here. And as the all-female team, can I just say, we will not stoop to the depths of fake compliments, ladies. We understand each other. We're more intelligent than that. We're on the same level. You get me, yeah? <laughs> no, do I don't get you. No. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone else was nervous about the quiz questions, and I've been hearing my heart rate getting higher and higher of like Googling compliments. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, Katie, I'm liking it. something that comes naturally to you, Katie, just saying my things. Katie, you're not helping the cause here. No, 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 I'm sorry. You're yeah, getting naturally got... inspired with the compliments. Christ alive. Empowerment is a cop out, then I'm, yeah, I, <laughs> I don't have anything nice to say, and it's, it's feminism that's driving that. <laughs> oh, well, at least oh, no one disappearing. The for me? disappearing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, Orla, can you just give us a little bit of a background of your cycling life? You know, you've come from a sports background as a as a journalist, and now you're very heavily in cycling. Tell us a little bit about yeah. that. Yeah, so I mean, I was sporty as a kid, but it was track and field, and I uh, started as a journalist. Oh my god many years ago uh, doing news journalism and then I moved to sports journalism. So I've been working in cycling now for over 10 years. Um, and recently I've become, the, well, recently, it's the last two years really, I front Eurosports coverage of the Grand Tours and other bits and pieces I write for Miller magazine. So uh, I do podcasts as well, the cycling podcast, Femina and the cycling podcast. Um, and cycling for me is just a way of life. I live in Amsterdam, we moved here two years ago. so. As soon as we moved here, we sold our cars and that was it. We were just bikes for the entire family. So that's how I get around every single day for every single trip. And I have to say that actually, when people say that riding your bike as a way of life makes you more active, it makes you incredibly lazy as well. I can't even contemplate walking to the end of the street because I think that takes too long. So for every <laughs> single trip, I jump on my bike, which is quite terribly lazy. Um, but yeah, it is. It's my way of life. It's, it's my everything, really. And so having lived in London and now Amsterdam, there's huge cultural cycling differences. What do you reckon here in the UK, big cities like London could do to follow in the footsteps? What things do you think make cycling so much easier over there, so much more accessible? Well, it started with a change in the law and that's where I think it has to start. It has to be um, political because here it started in the 70s and we had a similar situation in Amsterdam whereby the cars were taking over, they hadn't yet taken over, but I guess for the context of the time, it felt like they had taken over. Um, and there were a number of uh, parents who campaigned to reclaim the streets for children. And there'd been a number of deaths with uh, children being knocked over by cars. And so the political will just grew and grew to try to reclaim streets away from cars and they changed the law. So the law here protects the most vulnerable in any collision. So if a pedestrian is knocked over by a cyclist, then the uh, presumption of innocence is on the pedestrian and the cyclist has to prove they weren't at fault. And significantly, that's the same for vehicles and for cyclists. And so all of the infrastructure followed off the back of that. Um, it changes your way of thinking. It changes the way of thinking of drivers because they know that they can't get away with intimidating people. If there's a slight knock, they're at fault. And that the knock on effect of all of that is that uh, because it's easier to ride your bike almost everybody does. And so most drivers are cyclists as well. We don't have that political division between cyclists and drivers here. It's just the way you choose to get around on any given day. So they don't have that um, sort of antagonistic relationship, dare I say, but infrastructure makes a big difference. Culture makes a big difference. But for me, 
and from how I studied it, it it's all come from a change in the law and I think that really is a fundamental uh, difference yeah. to see in the UK. And Cycling UK are really big believers in all of those sorts of changes that you've been talking about there, Orla. You know, doing big pushes to change the highway code this year in 2020 and to put infrastructure in, temporary and permanent, um, pushing back against media storms where um, there's been a bit of a backlash against cyclists and all that sort of thing. So if anybody watching really believes in that sort of vision that Orla's just described from Amsterdam and knowing that change is possible, then we do appeal to you to pop a donation in at some point during this evening. We really appreciate that to keep that work going and help make the UK a cycling nation as well. Now over to you, Katie. Um, you've got a few achievements under your belt as a cyclist. Can you just give us a little synopsis of you as a bike racer? To be honest, a lot about me as a bike racer is exactly what Orla said about making you more lazy. That that resonated. The, um, the, the person that asks, why are you getting in the elevator? You're a professional athlete. Um, why, yeah. don't walk anywhere don't, um, yeah. don't walk when you can ride I think is the, the adjunct to don't stand when you can sit down don't sit down when you can lie down this is a missing part but sorry but that wasn't your question um, I'm, a, yeah, I'm, a, I'm a cyclist I'm a track cyclist I'm an Olympic cyclist um, I'm a keen quizzer uh, I'm more into the quizzing than the charisma so <laughs> um, <laughs> Um, I, I, as you know, I had a last minute panic to try and um, make myself look more presentable. I'm sorry the backdrop doesn't. This is my um, my Manchester base, which is sort of half home, half hovel. Um, but uh, I'm gripping onto this paddle enthusiastically, ready to go. <laughs> All right. Well, that that is that you want your teammate, Kira. Love it. Good. Are you feeling like you're a strong team? Because the internet has voted you on top at the moment as who they expect to win tonight. That's not good. That's not good. Yeah, I mean, I'm fine with the pressure. I did uh, when I was watching well, the other yeah, Yes, one of us is. <laughs> 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 You're one of us, Katie, I'm quite sure of that. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking we didn't we didn't have a meetup. We didn't go through our game plan. I, if, if I don't know an answer, I'm going to go like this and then you take it. Okay. Um, and uh, otherwise. If I don't know an answer, I'll go. And if I know an answer, I'll go. <laughs> and if I'm not sure, I'll go. <laughs> you got that? Training. Yeah. <laughs> so basically, it's all over to you. <laughs> Clear <do> as mud. <laughs> Brilliant. All right. Should we get on with this round then? Your time on the clock is three minutes and it starts now. Over to you, Quizmaster. At which famous bike race did Irish cyclist Matt Bramimir win his body weight in beer in 2015? <laughs> Oh, it's a Belgian one. I don't know. Pass. Uh, pass. Maurice Garin won the Tour de France in 1904, but was then disqualified with four other riders. For what for? Catching a train? Yeah, getting on a train. Correct. Uh, both the male and female world record holders for the fastest solo around the world trip are from which country? I think Great Britain, right? Uh, within that, within oh, that. Scotland, yeah, Scotland. Yeah, I could give you that. I, I, uh, did you say Scotland? She said it, she said Scotland. it. Yeah, 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 yeah correct. It was Matt I want to be accused of bias. <laughs> <laughs> but I was pointing at you because I thought, you're going to know this. That was my cue. <laughs> anyway, go, go Using time, you're using time. In which year was the Bicycle Touring Club founded? 1874. Nah, sorry, 1878. What is the oh, name in a race who, ca who carries the water bottles to other riders? Domestic. Correct. True or false, during World War II, Japan invaded most of Malaysia by bike. True. Ooh. Correct. How many times has the UK hosted stages of the Tour de France? Oh, Three. I Okay. No, four times, 1974, 1994, 2007, and 2014. What was the first case Cycling UK, then CTC, fought in the courts? Uh, no, pass. Maybe we can come back to it. Sorry. Uh, pa uh, nicknames. Which ex-professional rider was the nickname of, uh, uh, as a nickname, the Eagle of Earning? Oh, God. Oh, no. Pass. Uh, you sorry. can use your paddles if you want, your help paddles, oh. don't forget. 
Well, he wants the whole night, though. Wants in the whole night. Go, go. Uh, I'll carry on, Mass. What do you get if you multiply the number of British cycling gold medals in the 2016 Olympics by the number of riders in an Olympic BMX final? So is there eight riders in an Olympic BMX final, right? Eight? Um, uh, and yes. So eight times um, uh, one, two, three, four, um, five, six. 20 seconds. Seven. Uh, is it? Eight times seven is what is that? Is that six? Oh, gold medals? It's eight times six gold medals, 48. <sighs> Who is the current women's Olympic world race champion? Five seconds. Five seconds. Five seconds. Correct. Where, uh, where does Cycling UK's great time's up? Time's up. Oh. So I'll finish. Great North uh, Trail start and finish. A point for each. Oh, sorry. What was that? Talk Where does question. Cycling UK's Great North Trail start and finish? Uh, shall we say Manchester? No, absolutely not. It's Peak District and John O'Groats uh, slash um. Kate Rath. Um, you passed on a couple. I can't remember which ones, but never <laughs> mind. You've got five. <laughs> All right, we've got them anyway, Lorraine. Don't worry. And no <laughs> effort, guys. Oh, you you <laughs> I think that puts you one point ahead of the red team. I can't remember fully, but I think you're in the lead. All right, shall we get the blue team back on? We're going to get Ned and Nani ready for their round. Well done, girls. Thank you. And in with Ned and Manny. Well done, everybody who's playing along at home. You can write your answers in the comments if you want. You can just talk about it amongst your friends and family or write it on a bit of paper. Um, but the real people it's important for is you guys. You guys are the ones that need to get these right. How are you feeling? Buffering. <laughs> ready. You know what? Manny, as a black, how you as a, as do black, me so? How you do me so? <laughs> as a black, try to sabotage me. Yeah, he's so trying to sabotage everyone. Don't, don't take it personally. He's trying to, he's trying to, he's trying to unsettle everyone. It's mind games. <laughs> That's my internet connection. Oh, no, Manny isn't freezing again, is he? <laughs> no. Oh, I don't know if this is down to Adam Blythe. I don't know if he's doing something to your screen, Manny, <laughs> stopping you from being able to compete, but we're going to have to go ahead regardless. Nice to see you back. You've got three minutes. Your time on the clock starts now. In which year was Chris Froome forced to run up Mount Vuntu after crashing? 2016. Correct. Which rider has won the most stages at the Giro d'Italia? Uh, I'm going to say it's somebody okay. Italian. Who, who Manny? I was going to say it's Max. But... Uh, I was, uh, Cipollini? Uh, correct. Who is the fastest female to Ooh. cycle around the world? I oh. don't know. Jenny oh. Graham, what colour does Jenny the leader... Graham. What colour does the leader of the mountain classification of the Vuelta wear? Blue. Are you, are you holding up your help card? Blue polka dots. Blue polka dots. Yes, correct. Uh, which, uh, <laughs> which rider, nicknames, which rider is affectionately known as the gorilla? Andre Greipel. Yes, correct. Cyclists are known for their love of coffee, but what is an affogato? Oh. Blythe, <laughs> we need Adam Blythe. <laughs> okay, pause. What is an affogato? This is going into the comments. It's the public. The audience can all help out. Ned and Manny here. They need your help. What is an affogato? Ned, Manny, I want to see your fingers. I want to make sure that you're not Googling this. <laughs> Pure can innocence dogger, right there. Uh, Anna, can you ask Dogger, please? <laughs> <laughs> dogger says the answer's woof. <laughs> okay so to the audience the audience if you know the answer to what is an affogato please help out manny and ned they're desperate for some extra points okay we've got one answer coming in oh, ice cream and espresso nick jago says it's ice cream and espresso peter says it's coffee ice cream dessert coffee and ice cream and Come steve on. Come Stephen on. says it's a female alligator. 
Yeah. <laughs> so, gentlemen, what's your answer? Uh, it's the Manny. What do you reckon? It's I, I just I think it's the ice cream. It's the ice cream in the coffee, isn't it? Come on. Give us yeah, the it is, it's correct. In which, oh, in which Jessica. did Marion Voss win her first Olympic gold medal? 2012. No, 20, 2008. 2008. I didn't finish the sentence. 2008. Oh, that's it. Come on. Oh, that's Come on. Come on. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Mass, nice. what do you get if you multiply the number of airpins on outdoors uh, by the number of different British male Tour de France winners? Right, Froome, Wiggins, Thomas. Froome, Wiggins, Thomas. Haven't missed any, have I? Right, that's three. And how many, how many hairpins on outdoors? Is it 13? Uh, number of hairpins think... on outdoors right. by, uh, yeah. Stop it, Adam. On outdoors. I think it's 13 <laughs> hairpins, isn't it? I might have got that wrong. So I'm going to go, Manny, have you got any sh did, Do you want to? Did you say 30 or 29? 13 hairpins, I think. 13 on outdoors. We're running out of time. Oh. I, 39. 39. Uh, oh, I'm so sorry. It's 63, 21 hairpins by three male 21. winners. Ah. Um, Belgium is a famous cycling country, but what is its natural national dish? Chips. 20 seconds. Chips. 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 Fritz. Fries. Fritz. Uh, Fritz. Chips are part of it, but it's not the Fritz whole thing. Fritz and mussels. Fritz and mussels. Yes, oh, correct. Man. What is the distance of Cycling UK's off-road adventure trail, King Alfred's Way? 392,000 miles. Um, you're oh. absolutely wrong. It's 350 kilometers. <laughs> <laughs> you started with something there. <sighs> Manny, Lorraine, Lorraine, you Lorraine, wait, wait, wait. Lorraine. Lorraine, you said you start, so you fit, you started, so you finish, right? Yeah, so yeah, we yeah. Can get one more. No, no, Manny, Manny, you've been really saucy, my love, and you ha I haven't heard the flattering or the. Yeah, oh, you've been magnificent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I had to kind of ask you, you know. So mm -mm. <laughs> I think uh, you're going to have to go one step above, Manny. Maybe you have to do poetry, break into song or dance, which we know you're so good at. But ooh. here are the <laughs> points. Well done, blue team. You're in the lead already with seven points. Yellow team and red team both at second with five points. Okay, if we just take blue team off the screen now for a second so they can gloat behind the scenes, we don't need to see all of that. Lorraine, it's quite tight, isn't it? Yes, it is. Uh, they, they seem to know the knowledge. They know the knowledge, but I'm glad the blue team didn't feel that they were above asking for help. It's a good life lesson, people. That is very true, very true. And some more life lessons coming up as we expone the joys of cycling. Because don't forget, we're all having a lot of fun here tonight, but it's all in the name of a good cause for Cycling UK. So we've got another video from our campaigns manager, Keir. 2020 has been a packed year for the campaign team at Cycling UK. We've secured more funding from government for protected cycle lanes. We launched a cycle advocacy network linking up local campaigners across the country, and we recruited new staff in Wales and Northern Ireland. But we're particularly happy with the success of a long-running campaign for a safer highway cause, the framework for how we all interact with each other when we're cycling, walking and driving. Many of the current rules are ambiguous, poorly worded and fail to keep cyclists safe. And this summer, after years of persistent campaigning, we persuaded the government to review the highway code. Even better, many of our recommendations were taken on board, with new rules proposed to help keep everyone safe when cycling and walking. The proposals will help tackle close passing, hard dooring and left hook collisions, and include, for the first time, a recognition that drivers of the most dangerous vehicles, such as lorries, need to take on a greater responsibility for the safety of others. It's been an incredible journey and a huge amount of work to reach this point and we couldn't have done it without the consistent and continued support of our members. But there's still so much more to be done to make sure the changes mean safer roads in practice and not just on paper. 
We need to engage with police and motoring organisations, with driving schools and road safety partnerships, with local councils and employers, and we need to make sure the government does its bit too. And we can't do that without you. You can help us complete this journey and make safer roads for everyone by joining or donating for Cycling UK today. That's right, Cycling UK. Oh, nice hat. Nice hat. Thank you very much. <laughs> How I need to change. I think it suits you, but I don't need to flatter you. I just genuinely think it suits you. You're looking lovely. Oh, bless you. And you're, I must say, your joker outfit is fire, girl. Do you like my glittery eyebrows? I do. I do. I was a little worried. I thought she was going for the Spock look, um, but I can see what you're trying to do. Very creative. I think I just went too far, which is a story of my life, to be honest. But anyway, that was the theme. But we're talking about cycling tonight. Uh, we've got the cycling community here and watching. And as you can see, without your voices, without your support, they need that in order to continue the work of Cycling UK to make the UK a safer and more enjoyable place for cyclists. So, uh, Join as members. We'd love to see more people becoming members of Cycling UK to get behind that amazing work. And if you can donate tonight, that would be gratefully appreciated. Um, you can donate £5 if you by texting CYCLE to 70970. Or you can donate £10 by texting CYCLE to 70191. Together, our voices are stronger. So thank you everyone for taking part tonight and the fun is going to continue as we go into round two. Can we just have a very quick points recap from producer Nick, please? And we're going to go into round two, which is called Who Said That? So uh, blue team are in the lead with seven points, red team five, yellow team five. And now if we can get all of our guests on the screen together for Who Said That? And I will explain the rules. Everyone back at home, be ready to join in. You're welcome as part of this game as well. You can't claim any points for yourselves, but it's it's all just in the glory of the internet. Everyone's having a good time. Welcome back on the screen, everyone. So I'm going to quickly run through the rules of who said what. There are two points for every correct answer. Producer Nick is going to show a statement on the screen. You have to guess who said the statement. Now, all of these statements have been said by one of you guys at some <laughs> point in the past. Oh, no. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. <laughs> if I it did. was you, you cannot, you cannot say that was me. You can't get a point for saying it was your own statement. But can your if teammate say it? What? Can your teammate say it was you? If we give yes. them like a little wink. Yes, but we can all see it. <laughs> <laughs> are you seeing the same screen as the rest oh, of us, Adam, yeah. or are you just have it on selfie mode? I mean, if you guys can work out that technology, you get bonus points for being one step ahead of the game anyway. Could I just say, that is such a cyclist thing, what Adam just did. That's such a, you know, what, what are the rules? What are the yeah. regulations? How can I, I bend them? them? <laughs> <laughs> it's brilliant, though. It's brilliant. Subtle, subtle. Yeah, well, we're bringing cycling to this game. So, is, is this guy going to be taking part? Has he got something to say? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's going to be taking over from me henceforth because it'll be more. <laughs> you mean that kid at school that would just be like there in the back corner, like making shapes out of your textbook or something, and then the teacher would ask what's going on, and then you'd just go <laughs> throw a curveball. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Anyway, so do you understand the rules? Also, you only get one guess per question or per statement. So you can't keep trying. No, per person. But your point, you get one point for your team if you get it right, because obviously and this is a team game. And do um, we write down? Sorry? Do we write the answers? No, just hold up your paddle. And Lorraine, Quizmaster, Big Boss, who cannot be argued with, so don't even try. I'm looking at you, Adam. She will say who gets who paddle she saw first and who gets 
to give their answer. I would never argue with Lorraine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, one feeling again. One feeling. <laughs> Keely, we're at a distinct disadvantage here, I suspect. Yeah, I was going to say, nobody's tried arguing. That was my, <laughs> that's what we were going to go for. That's going to be our original edge. I think it's pretty obvious it's a no-go from the outset. Some people just ooze that aura of authority. I wouldn't mess with Lorraine. I'm just warning you guys. It's not a threat. It's for your own safety. I'm a putty cat. <laughs> Any more questions? Have you got your paddles ready? Don't forget, audience, you're able to play along at home, so please feel free to join in. Lorraine, Ow. Quizmaster, the big boss, over to you. Okay. It's going. First statement. Apologies. Clearly not leaving the house has confused me over what day it is. I saw Rebecca's paddle go up first. Oh, I was going to say all of it. She put her paddle up. I was going to say you. Let <laughs> <laughs> you put your paddle up. <laughs> so that's interesting. Um, no, I wasn't going to say her. My, I was second, wasn't I? Uh, yeah, you were second. What? Uh, you, uh, I, think it, I think it was Kiate. You, you, you get a chance to say. Who do you think it was? I think it was Kiate. Oh, what a shame. It was Rebecca Charlton. <laughs> <laughs> right, new plan, Orla. <laughs> the factory back in. That well. You were the only one who didn't put your paddle up, Kiate. It was strategic. <laughs> right, moving on. We've been Oh, oh, you can there. Trust your gut. 20% climbs are when you pull a calf muscle just walking uphill. I think ouchy is the official word. Lorraine, I might have to step in as the paddle caller whilst you're reading because I saw Ned's paddle you go know, up there. I think what? that's a good idea. Okay. I thought you were going to tell me off there. <laughs> no, um, no, I wouldn't drink of doing such a thing, Anna, especially yeah, in that Rebecca. wonderful hat you're wearing. Oh, thank you. Thank you, stop. Uh, Ned, who do you think it was? I'm regretting it now, but I think it was Adam Blythe. Oh, it was Orla! Oh, oh I thought it was Adam too! <laughs> I was good at climbing. <laughs> Lorraine, Lorraine, <laughs> do we lose yeah. a point for that? Sorry? No, no we, we don't, don't lose, lose a point. point no, no, no points are lost. Only gain. But what you can do is if someone gets the answer wrong, we can move on and let somebody else guess the answer apart from the person who has already tried. Understood? Yeah. No, I, okay, we're, we're moving on with those rules for the next we question. We can call the answer, Adam. It's not guessing oh, anymore. Lord. Uh, moving on to the third statement, I've got quite a big nose, so I'm absolutely fine with masks. And I'm sure that other people with quite big noses would agree. God, this is awkward. Adam, I saw your, your paddle go up first. Who do you think's got a big nose? Ned. <laughs> You're absolutely <laughs> right. Oh. I remember my, that tweet actually. That's why I knew it. My tactic massively backfired <laughs> because I, I I tried to message Manny to say, ironically enough, I touched my nose when I knew. And, it was and my you throat. did this, and then I thought. But but then I, I, I forgot. I forgot that everybody editor. else could read my tactic. How naive is that? <laughs> Ah. Okay. Oh, yeah. How many points have we got now? Have we got eight points in total now? I doubt it. I doubt it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next question. Nick's adding it up as we go along. I think it is. Uh, when you drop back to tow your mum back on and then she jumps you and goes on the attack. Wait. Orla. Manny. I'm afraid not. Was it Kiri? Oh, go on, Ned. Katie Archibald said that. No! Oh. So with so much confidence. He should almost lose a point just for the discovery oh, of that. Go on, Adam. Rebecca. It was indeed Rebecca. <laughs> How oh, are you so confident? Adam is going to roll. 
Look at those moves. Oh, man, he's been on the white wine. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right, next statement. Um, my evenings at the moment are the women's tour followed by Love Island, obviously. Orla. Kitty. Nope. Well, <laughs> Love Island is through me, but... Mm. Adam. It's me. You can't do it. It was you. We can expect good. that. It was you. you. I don't think we that. can expect she that. Can't get... We have to move on to the next person who put their paddle up, which was Ned. Ned, who do you no, think? Uh, was? Adam Blythe said that. Uh, oh, you're absolutely correct. Damn it. <laughs> Digging yourself holes. Oh, dear. Um, so much right. knowledge anyway. We don't need these points. Adam got too greedy there. He got too greedy. <laughs> Massively. I regularly clear my Google searches, not to hide porn, but so no one finds out the simple words I can't spell. Adam? Katie. You're absolutely right. Oh, good job. I think that was a wicked statement, Katie. Is that, Adam, how did you know the answer to that one? It's just a complete guess. I sort of panicked because the, the last time I got guessed it was because I had my paddle down. So I'm just sort of raising it from time to time to prove <laughs> I'm here. Oh, okay, right. Strategy. I like the idea that I give off the aura of an illiterate and that that was just <laughs> be deduced. Well, that was what I was going to say. You do seem like the type of person that might be wanting to hide some dodgy words. <laughs> next, next statement. <laughs> oh, I know you're not easy enough. I was thinking that, but there's no way I was going to say it. <laughs> um, they say couples who Zwift together stay together. Right, okay, guys, you are too keen. We have to at least wait for three words to have passed before you put your paddle up. <laughs> what if one of us is on a Wi Fi delay? I waited for three words before I put mine up. Your, bad, bad your, luck. That's your it's problem, Judge, Laura. It's judge's discretion. Let's start again oh, with that yeah. question, Lorraine. They say couples who drift together stay together. Hola. Money. <laughs> Absolutely right. <laughs> and Molly, is that a true statement? Indeed. Yes, indeed. Oh, <laughs> who cycles with their partner let us know with the comments because in my experience couples that ride together just about cling i don't know how they make it through to be honest yeah that's a, no, no, a no, true no. opinion not a true statement <laughs> you know what anna you, you know why this works right for many years, my partner always criticizes me whenever we go on holiday and I take my bike with me. She always gets jealous and she's like, oh, how come every morning you go, you disappear for three hours and four hours and I see you on Instagram posting these amazing pictures and then and then you never want to do anything with me. And I'm like, well, you need to go on a bike. <laughs> and so her getting on a bike has made our relationship a little bit easier because now we can actually travel together and enjoy riding and seeing all these wonderful beautiful like scenic you know locations and me not having to hide that oh. <laughs> see that that is really oh, really cool really yeah. as it's opposed to you know, half wheeling arguments that everyone else has to deal with loves in six months time i'm not going to be able to keep up with her on the climbs <laughs> yeah. That's what we're gonna have to split up. <laughs> <laughs> at least, at least she's got a heads up at Christmas, eh, Manny? Um. <laughs> <laughs> she can maybe spend less on the present now. <laughs> uh. All right, Lorraine, let's keep right. it going. Yeah, <laughs> on behalf of our species, I would like to thank chickens for eggs. I live a mostly vegan diet these days, but I bloody love eggs. Adam? Ola? No. 
Uh, Katie, you I think you're up, went up next. Can. Have you seen me in the green room? Ole, you always <laughs> went up next. Um, so not Ole, Katie, you just spoke, Gordon, and that's why I said your name. I know that we're past the clarifying rules part, and I don't want to get bullied by Ned for clarifying rules, but um, uh, are you in the game, Anna? Could you possibly be an option? No, I, I'm not. Okay, less confident. Neither is um, Rain. Uh, um, Manny? Is Manny vegan? Okay. No. Rebecca, are you going to try and bring it back for the red team? Ned. Are you confident uh, in the answer? Are you sure about that answer? Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> oh. Oh, Go chickens. Go chickens. I need vegan tips, Ned. Message me. Trying yeah, to wean myself off. Mob Kitchen. That's the website to go to. Brilliant. Okay. Brilliant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, so there you go. If you could keep that to yourself, have a little chat later, maybe. <laughs> we're sharing we're gonna the cover all the causes tonight. If we're sharing sharing love. Love. This is where you need to be. Eggs are great, though. Do love eggs. I love They're eggs. Excellent. They oh, exceed my right. expectations <laughs> all the time. Eggs can we do a quick, can we do a quick hands up if we like eggs? Just. Um, I quite often find that, that one egg is enough. Oh. oh. Thank you. Oh, very good. That very was a very good, good yoke. Yolk. Absolutely <laughs> crafty. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Do we get a point for that joke? I, 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 I did. I did. I feel like yellow team and red team both deserve a bonus point for those puns there. If producer oh, Nick can that out, I'd be very grateful. Oh, this is outrageous. <laughs> it is a bit. Long, but I just think it's only fair. Okay, Do Lorraine. Lorraine. Oh, I'm, I'm, yeah, okay. Uh, <laughs> all, the interview with me at the end of this is full potato brains. I'm not on strong painkillers or anything. I just haven't slept. Adam, your paddle went up first. I'm going to go with Rebecca. No. Orla, um, yeah, Orla, yours was up next. I'm going to Kiri. Are you saying that your teammate is potato brains? <laughs> I'm saying it's the kind of thing she would say wow. about herself with, with the utmost humility. <laughs> oh. And it's also a very witty quote. And I think Katie's very funny. I think it's very witty. And you're absolutely correct. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess um, to, to prove the point, I don't remember saying it, but seeing the way you do it. So funny and true, Katie. Bonus. Oh, Lord. Twitter <laughs> just hangs around like a stink. Yeah. Uh, Is that a uh, last statement. Rumours that Edvard Balson Hagen's dad has retrained as a Flandrian railway controller are as yet unfounded. That was Manny. False. <laughs> we get a bonus point for that. That's a brilliant answer. That's good. That's good. <laughs> I'll leave that up to producer Nick to decide. Rebecca. <laughs> Ned. Nope. Okay, next. Adam. Paula. Yeah. Absolutely. It was me. It was me. I was going to say Orla, but didn't you have your paddle up? I put it up eventually as a bit of a decoy, but it took a while. Uh, I was hoping, yeah. Is that legal, Lorraine? I don't think that's legal, Orla. You know what? I can't have a paddle to live right now. It's you can't have a decoy paddle. It's common. Oh, no, this is ruthless. Wait, I can, no, this listen, is ruthless. No, no, no. no. no time out. Time out. Time out. <laughs> Okay, guys, this is a bit of Anna. fun. Anna. <laughs> it's fun, Anna. I need that help paddle. I need that help paddle. We work hard for them. Okay, next. I want to get a point for the banter. I think I thought it was very clever. Yeah, it's yeah, no yeah. blow to the person who put that paddle up first. So I thought it was very clever. <laughs> And Lorraine, how many more statements have we got? Uh, I think that's it. That's the end of the round. Amazing. We need to round, a round of points. 
We oh, wow. are the champions. How did that happen, Eva? I, feel, I think it would be extra points for puns. Um. <laughs> we need more puns, Katie. We need more anything. And it's probably yeah. that Twitter addiction showing through a little bit here as well. The guy, the people Goodness that spend so much time on social media. <laughs> you've gone into a storming lead there in the red team. Right. This, I also think, can I suggest, I also think that it's um, very... No, you can't suggest, Ned. That, that Adam and Rebecca have said less memorable things in public <laughs> than everybody else. Than everybody oh, else. No. Excellent trolling, Ned. <laughs> yeah. uh, actually, Adam's had a blinder. Yeah. But at least we know who said what, Ned. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> At least you know that's put you into a storming lead, but there's still everything to play for. That is not the end of it whatsoever. You've just got a little breakaway, but if you want to keep that lead, you need to keep it up. Uh, well done, end of round two. And we're going to move on to another little video highlighting the work of Site from the UK. I hope everyone at home's having a great time. And don't forget, this is all part of a great cause. Hello, my name's Sophie, and I'm the off road campaigns officer for Cycling UK. Having access to off-road trails is really important to get beginners on bikes, boost rural tourism and enable the adventurers to explore. 70 years ago, after World War II, there was a move to get people out of polluted towns and cities and out into the countryside, which led to the creation of national parks and long-distance trails. The original vision was that these would be for walkers and riders, but since then the and riders part seems to have been forgotten. Of the 16 national trails in England and Wales, only two of them can be cycled from end to end. That's why Cycling UK is working towards developing a network of long distance trails so that people can explore amazing parts of the UK by bike. In 2019, we launched the Great North Trail, an 800 mile off-road adventure route from the Peak District to the north coast of Scotland. This year, we followed that up with King Alfred's Way, a 220 mile loop through the Anglo-Saxon Kingdom of Wessex through 10,000 years of history. The response blew us away. The popularity just shows the demand for these long distance trails where people can explore the countryside away from traffic. We want to go further and develop more fantastic trails across the length and breadth of Britain. But we can only do this with the support of our members and your donations. Together, we can create more amazing routes and enable more people to discover incredible places by bike. There was a lot of answers to round one in that video. I just want to say a big shout out to all the mountain bikers and off-roaders out there because this is a cause that is truly close to my heart, opening up the countryside and making it accessible to bicycles. If you agree with me, if you're behind that cause, then we'd love it if you could donate. Please um, so donate five pounds. You can text cycle to 70970. And if you want to donate 10 pounds, if you're feeling especially generous this Christmas, you can text cycle 70191. Thank you for all the donations that have been coming in so far. Really, really appreciate it. It's going to make the UK cycling community even stronger, even better, more enjoyable and safer. And let's get on with the entertainment. Lovely hat there, Lorraine. Thank you very much. I just don't it. know where to put the pom-pom though. It's a, a real pom-pom problem. The pom-pom struggles are real. I do understand. I think Orla's been struggling as well. She's just ended up with a bit of a unicorn head. Um, <laughs> my one's just flopping straight forward. Those pom-poms never go where you want them to go. No. Anyway, should we move on to round three? I think we should. Okay, this is a multiple choice round. We're going to start with the blue team on the screen. So that is Ned and Manny. We've got... Ned Bolting and Manny Arthur. Hey guys, you're in, the, hey. you're in the middle. You're in the middle, but this is an opportunity to gain loads of points back. You get two points for every correct answer, and it's made easier because you get four answers to pick from. 
The answers that you can pick from will be shown on the screen because it's multiple choice. And we have a little secret bonus question at the end. Uh, again, audience, if you want to play along at home, you're welcome, we'd love that. And uh, Lorraine, are you ready? Oh wait, any questions for our, for our players? No, but can I just- Do you tell understand? We, I do. Can understand I the rules. Just very quickly talk to my teammates. Has Ned frozen or is he just thinking really, really hard? No, I just, just wanted to talk to my teammates quickly. Is that okay? Yep, got you back. Manny, this is Come massive. On, talk to me, Ned. This is massive, this round. Yeah? I'm massive. <laughs> it, uh, it's, it's huge. I think it's it's one of those, it's not a round in which you can win it, but it's a round in which you can lose it, right? It's like one of those difficult stages in the Massive Central in the in the middle week of the Tour de France, yeah. all right? So plenty of opportunity, right? But we're up I don't think he's high, high five, high five. All right, yeah, high five. <laughs> All he's saying is that it's all to play for. Lorraine, over to you. Here we go. What is the Guinness World Record for the longest distance cycling backwards set by Andrew Hellinger in 2013? 290 kilometres, 310 kilometres, 338 kilometres or 377 kilometers is it actually it kilometers? i would have thought it would just be meters cycling backwards that's insane i just thought it was going to be days um i'll pick yeah. d yeah pick d d's fine d's good that's right. oh i'm sorry it is c 338 oh. kilometers what can i say i feel your pain Moving oh. on, question two. How many races did Eddie Merckx win in his career? 478, 525, 550, or 601 races? Audience at home, you're allowed to play along as well. I, mean, Ned, I saw you looking at the sky there. Nothing, you know yeah. No, I don't know the answer. I, I, I think it's not 601. I'm pretty confident of that. Uh, uh, Manny, you guessed the last one. Shall I just have a guess? Yeah, go, go right. for it. I've, I've got a funny feeling it's 478. Oh, your funny feeling's not right, though. It's 525. Oh, funny man. feelings. Yeah. Conclusion is don't listen to those <laughs> funny feelings. <laughs> <laughs> don't trust him. Don't worry, don't worry, Ned. We get it. We get it back. Uh, number three, the 2019 World Championships were held in Harrogate. 197 were on the start list of the men's rolls race. How many? How many finished the race? It was, was it 46, it was... 53, 66, or 72 riders? Oh, I actually thought it was going to be less than that. I thought it was like 30 something. Well, let's go for A then. Should we go for A, Manny? Because it was a horrible day. And what's the point? Yeah, it's, yeah. It was horrible. <laughs> Why would you even bother finishing unless you were Mads Pedersen and you won it? <laughs> yeah. You, right, know, you know what? You're absolutely right. It's a good thing you remember. Manny, it Manny. Horrible day. Oh, yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Sorry. The other way around. Boom. There you go. <laughs> Bit of synchronicity going on. Question four. It's coming uh, the together. Winner, yeah. The winner of the King of the Mountains classification at the Arctic Race of Norway takes home what as a prize? I know this. Oh, good. A gold see. trident. Wait see. a minute. A statue see. of the climbs. See. See. Seven. 500 see. kilograms of salmon. Kilometers. No, 500 kilometers of salmon. <laughs> You were so eager, I didn't hear above my chunter in there. 500 kilometres of salmon is what you're saying. Oh, salmon. Yeah. <laughs> that's very good. You're absolutely correct, except it's kilograms, not kilometres. But we'll give oh, you that. Come on, sorry. I'd, I'd go, I'd trust Ned on that one. <laughs> Either way, you get the points. <laughs> Two points. Right then. Um, finally, you have 60 seconds to draw a bike. As a oh, team, no, I'm really bad at this. You each must draw half of the bike, and then we'll put the two halves together, a bit like you did with your little hands up. 
Uh, points go to the team with the best bike. Wait, wait, can we confer? Who, you, Manny, you do the front, I'll do the back. All right, cool. And, and fill the whole thing. Right, okay. Are we starting? Who's yeah. Are you doing the time, Anna? No, there's no time. Just go ahead, start drawing your bikes. Draw half of it. So and I'll explain how you get points. The points are basically down again to Lorraine's discretion. You get two points for awesome, one point for okay, and zero points for unrideable. I literally don't know how bikes work. <laughs> that is a quote of the evening. <laughs> I have no idea how they work. They're really weird and complicated and they fall apart really easily. Um, for such a simple thing, they're incredibly useless. But I, oh, I don't know. There's the saddle and there's the. I don't even know what the bits are called, to be perfectly honest. Because at the all, end of the day, it's all about the rider, not about the bike, right? It is. For me, it is anyway. Yeah. Oh, look, I've done that the wrong way around as well. Because, oh, no, there we go. One thing we're allowed to do is swap the screen. So. All right. Ready? So you're done the front. So. Oh, no. Yeah. Wait. No. Wait. <laughs> Wait, is this going to work? What's going on, Manny? Manny, where's your bike? Manny, <laughs> so, like, Manny, you know, bring it back, bring it back, bring it back a bit more. Back. That, well, it kind of works. Actually, Manny. Oh, no. I'm going the wrong way around. <laughs> Sorry, that's supposed to be a light, by the way. I'm pretty chuffed. Really? Right <laughs> but I have to say, I'm only pleased with my bit because Manny's is so shocking. I thought Ned's half was good. Manny, <laughs> kind of pants. Well, not kind of, it was pants. You know, them hot steaming pants that you have to throw off as soon as you come off your ride. Oh, come That's on. Is like. Lorraine, so, Lorraine, Lorraine. Lorraine. Come on, go easy. Go easy. This is go a problem. I wouldn't ride that. I am going to give you half a point for that. Oh, thank you. And thank you. Next. <laughs> in, in my mind, I had something much more creative. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, well done, everyone. The points are getting added up. And let's get the red team on the screen. Well done, Manny and Ned. So over to Rebecca Charlton and Adam Bly. Feeling competitive. We know that you two are very competitive and you're in the lead all of a sudden. We're going over to the North Pole down straight away, getting straight into it. Over to you, Lorraine. As of July 2020, how many docking stations are there in London for the Santander Cycle Hire Scheme? Are there 456, 781, 905 or 1,109 stations? Adam, do you want to confer on this one? Yeah, I think it's either A, B, C or D. I totally I, agree. I think I'm erring higher. Yeah, I reckon 905. Okay, 905, final answer. Lorraine? Is wrong. It's 781. Damn it. How many seats does the longest ever tandem bicycle have? 14, 21, 26, or 35 seats? Can we confer with people in the room? You can ask the audience. You can, we've only got one help. Use it wisely. You've only got, you've only got one and a half rounds left. We might as okay. well use it, haven't we? What Let's do you think? Do you use your help. We need your help, people. Get on Google quickly. Okay. Please to the audience. This is over to the audience. Rebecca Charlton, Adam Blythe need your help. Are you ready? Get your answers in the comments. Um, Nick, if we could have the answers on the screen again. Lorraine, do you want to read out that question one more time? I will do. Uh, how many seats does the longest ever tandem bicycle have? 14. 21, 26, or 35 seats. We're relying okay. on you to help us now. 
If it all no, to I mean, play for, because you guys are in the lead at the moment, so maybe the audience want to bring you back down. Bring the answers. I need your help. 14 seats, 21, 26, 35. We've got a couple of people coming in at 35. Oh, Ooh. another one coming in at 35. Oh, another one coming in at 35. Should we do 35? Let's go 35. And we've Ooh. got someone that says yes. Doesn't know what it is, but they've said yes. It's not an answer. D. So uh, you're D. D. And you're absolutely correct. Thank you, audience. Thank you, everyone. In which year did a French rider last win the Tour de France? 1981, 1983, 1985, or 1987? 87, I think, Rebecca. What do you think? I trust you more than me. Let's lock that in. Let's go for it. Is that your final answer? Maybe. What do you think? You're making us doubt it now. I think, I think you're absolutely wrong. It was 1985. Moving on. Damn it. Should have trusted right. yourself. <laughs> Can I just say, I love this. I love the help from the audience here. Margaret Heron said that she knew the answer to the last one, but she wasn't going to tell you because she's all his mum. <laughs> Margaret. <laughs> Oh, Come on, Margaret! <laughs> oh, 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 oh spirit. fantastic tonight. Your daughter doesn't need help. Help us. <laughs> she doesn't need any help. You guys are in the lead currently. <laughs> All right, Lorraine, back onto the quiz. Um, roughly, how many bicycles are manufactured every year? Sixty-seven million. <laughs> 90 million, 100 million, or 120 million? Should we just go big? I reckon it's got to be D, hasn't it? Let's go big. Let's go D. Let's go D. Let's go big. Let's go big. Let's go big. It's actually C, 100 million. You weren't far off, but you were. Well, people get it wrong. It's it's almost like really a blessing. <laughs> I mean, it's only 20 million off. You might as well give us a point. We got it pretty much right. We don't love your hat, Lorraine. I love because uh, you were way ahead. Yeah, I'm with all nice his though, Lorraine. We like I'm the hat. I'm right now. All his mum's got it going on. Yes, she has. Uh, and for your final question, uh, as with the previous team, you have 60 seconds to draw a bike as a team. Hang on, who does which bit? Is that me? Yeah. You go the right side of the page, I'll go the left. So you draw... I'm doing the front. Yeah, you draw the front on the right side of the page and I'll draw the back on the left. Yeah. I'm sure about that. Yeah. You've, got, you've got the technical bit. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, where are we going? Halfway through the top tube? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, guys, get 30 seconds oh, left. Right here. Yeah. Am I doing the pedal, Adam? Charlene wants to know whether teams get forfeits just for being rubbish. Charlene! <laughs> <laughs> no offence. Oh, Do I? Lesser. We don't condone trolling on the internet. Mine's quite small. Does it need... What? <laughs> we'll, we'll see. Because I... 10 seconds left. So my position is really long, so I've done a really long bike. And time's up, go. Right, hold on. Oh no! <laughs> oh, you know what's happened? Yeah, that's it. There we go, well oh. done, Nick. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Yes. Um, <laughs> fine Kinda. Mm. Rebecca, move it right, right I, at the end um, of the You know what? I am going to move one. It's pretty I'm good. Move one because it's okay, but it's not exactly. It's not exactly art club, is it? It's. I'll give it one. But I mean, if someone was going to look at that and you said, "What are these people drawn together?" They go, "Obviously, that's a beautiful bike." Really? Well, go and ask them people to give you the marks then. Damn it, Lorraine. 
<laughs> All right. Well done, red team. Was that enough to keep you in the lead? We'll find out. We need yellow team to come on the screen now. We have Orla and Katie. Welcome back. Hello, You've got everything hello. to go for. This is everything for you guys to claw it back up. Lorraine, let's get ready with the multiple choice. Okay. Mom, Mom, Katie, you can at me. <laughs> oh, Hi, WhatsApp, Orla, no cheating over here. <laughs> Katie, you are on mute, just so you know. Sorry, hello. Potholes can be a menace to cyclists, and we often grumble about the state of the roads. But on average, how often do you come across a road defect in the UK? Is it every 55 minute, meters, every 110 meters, every 180 meters, every 350 meters? I would say every 55. Yeah, I mean, it depends how small you, let's, let's just be mean about it. I think it's it every 55 and they should sort it out. <laughs> Let's go 55. Well, on that note, we'll talk about one of Cycling UK's campaigns, which allows people to mark potholes and report them on the internet, and then it goes directly to the local council. So if anybody does want to report potholes, get in touch with Cycling UK. Thank you for bringing that to our attention, Katie. And on with the game. It's only every 350 metres when they all join into one massive pothole. The ones that we're saying are every 55. <laughs> You're on a pothole for 350 metres. At the time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, we're going A. A. Um, you know, I I I completely understand where you're coming from in terms of saying uh, you know, when you're out riding and the roads damn, you know, and it feels like it's every 55 meters. In fact, no, it's, it's every 110 meters. So you got it wrong. Uh, so the thing is though, I ride twice as quick as most people. So it seems like 55, so that counts, yeah? Yeah. That's yeah. how meters work, yes. <laughs> yes, moving on. Uh, Everesting is a popular cycling challenge where you try and complete a single ride with the same amount of elevation gain as the height of Mount Everest. After being recently recalculated, what is the new official height? Is it... 8,448 meters, 8,804, 8, 8,848, or 8,999 meters. Do you know what's good here? They're all so close together that we're not going to get stupid. We're not going to look stupid <laughs> if we get it wrong. Do you know this one, Katie? Because I think maybe we, we asked the audience for this one. Oh, someone's going to know. Yeah, this is it. Yeah, this should we do that? Because I, I can't be certain. Some of your someone's rivals know. know the answer to this one. So over to the audience. Yeah, you know you the when you're yeah. backstage, giving it all that. I wouldn't. Or, I mean, are you going to trust their answers if they know it? Let's bring it over to the audience. We know there's a little bit of a delay here, but we're just going to wait for a couple of seconds. Lorraine, do you want to read out the question again? I will do. Everesting is a popular cycling challenge where you try and complete a single ride with the same amount of elevation gain as the height of Mount Everest. After being recently recalculated, what is the new official height? 8,448, 8,804, 8,848, 8,999. Okay, so Orla and Katie, Orla and Katie, if you click on the main comments in your yeah. sidebar, you'll be able to see the answers coming in from the audience. So Larry Eisenhower is drunk or he doesn't like us, or both. <laughs> Um, and I'm wondering, Katie, do you know anyone called Louise in your family? Yeah, there we go. Because I was uh, I was feeling good when Charlene pitched in because she's a friend of mine. But um, <laughs> I think we're going to see you all the way, are we? Thanks, Mum. Okay. <laughs> so what's the answer? C. Oh, I'm going to see in my mum. You're to absolutely up, yeah? right. Well done. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, right then, which year was the penny farthing invented? And that, and your options are 1861, 1862, 1863, 1864, 
1871, 1881, or 1891? I think for the sake of palindrome, <clears throat> palindrome representation, we should give C a go. <laughs> once again, they're all really close and we don't know, do we? <laughs> um, well, I, would... I think for the sake of having used the sentence for the sake of palindrome representation in a cycling quiz, we deserve at least an extra half point for that. We'll leave that over to producer Nick to decide. <laughs> well, we have been in our corner. Name, it's not down to me. <laughs> so um, I was going to say 1891, but I'm, I'm going to go. I'm going to go. That's me covering my back in case. Yes. <laughs> We're on the same team. <laughs> I'm going to back, back Kitty, but when her back's turned, I might just give a little bit of a stab. Um, we'll go for C, Kitty, shall we? Let's go for C. Please. Oh, what a shame. It was 1871. Ah, uh, phew. <laughs> At least we're still united in our oh. incorrectness. Absolutely. You're <laughs> united in your wrongness. Exactly. Oh, that's cool. Uh, how many consecutive grand tours did Australian Adam Henson complete? Was it 17, 18? 19 or 20. And that I was interviewed him at the end of his career, which was this year, and said this to him. And I this think, is on you. It was yeah, the I got the oh, man. Um, I'm not going to look on our private chat with the others because they'll be trolling us for not knowing this. Um, I actually would have said 21, so that's not right. Um, I mean, it hints, it hints towards going D. I think, uh, I'm, I'm I think D, but I think 20 is too round. I don't think it was a round number. But if you got to 19, would you not just, you would want to. It wasn't his choice though. Okay, that's yeah, fair point. He wasn't selected. Um, oh man, I think 11 was the record before. Is that right? 19 or 20 and it's gonna be neither of them. Um, Oh, Give me shit. five more seconds. Oh, I like your teammate could ask the audience. You could use up your final oh. ask the audience. Oh. That not All right, yeah. back over to the audience. This is the last of your help cards being used. I like that you were showing all your working or less because the, the bonus points haven't worked for us so far, but maybe this time. <laughs> yeah, a, a so this is back, back to the audience. Commentary. Lorraine, could you read out the questions to the audience? I will. What they're answering no, here. No, no, no. All, all are How many? Consecutive Grand Tours did Australian Adam Henson complete? 17, 18, 19, or 20 tours? So Craig's gone straight in with yeah. 20. We do know there's a bit of a delay, so we're just waiting for all these answers to start coming in. Just waiting for my mum. <laughs> or Orla's mum. Yeah. Come on, Get on Where's your big mum in this? Yeah, I don't Can I just say while we're waiting for answers, my mom's hilarious, right? Because she's actually used um, like an anonymous name there, like a pseudonym. So her name isn't Margaret. It's the Irish for Margaret, which is Maraid. So she's obviously done that to disguise herself and then said, Orla's mum on the air. <laughs> <laughs> mom, you should have just gone with Maraid. I knew you were using Margaret again anyway. <laughs> Right now, I'm conflicted. Oh, Such so, a mum yeah. thing to do. All right, oh. so Katie, all are you able to see in the comments there? Do you want to pick your yeah. and, and and Katie, oh. you need to have words with Louise, whoever she is. We're going to go yeah. with twenty. Okay, good. Because Jos Josie Knight is a female. So we're just going to ignore it. Mummy Archibald. Yeah, I'm so, so sorry. Is Louise your mummy? Huh? Is Louise your mum? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to sound so disrespectful, Louise. Oh, this is awful. Should we go with the majority or we go with Katie's mum? We've got to go against Katie's mum. I'm so sorry, Louise. I'm I think so she's sorry. trying to bring us back down to earth. I think it's a sort of parenting tactic. She knows Don't worry, wrong. Louise. Your daughter's losing. We're losing. It's fine. <laughs> Character building. What answer we'll are you going to go We're going to be, yeah. There's Emma. <laughs> but thank you. So what answer are you going for? D, D, please. There are people D. we trust telling us Let's D. D, uh, you're absolutely correct. Yay. 
I would have been absolutely wrong. Thank you, everyone. Thank and you, Gary. Finally, you need to do as the other teams have done, and that is to draw a bike. Your time's up now. now. Bike. Oh, oh. Not um, what are you doing? Um, I'll go. Um, you go front. Can I also say front. that good on us? I didn't start. Front. I kind of saw this. Way. That way. Okay, fine. Okay. I might draw as I go. Oh no, hold on. You're going front. Yeah, I'm going. Yeah, I'm going front. So and can I just say, Orla, in case you were worried, because I think Gary is worried, he does like you. He was just trying to <laughs> round up the Everesting oh, to the thank nearest you, Gary. Point. Thank you. So, so um, you're probably don't gonna... worry, you are loved. Great so can... racing in a suit there, Gary, like that. 20 yeah. seconds left. Anyone who's just tuned in, this is Break the Cycle Christmas Games. We have Katie Dunford and Orla Chenoui drawing a bike or drawing half of a bike and seeing if it can match up. <laughs> Never mind, please. Never Five mind. seconds. Three, oh, when... two, one, go. On the screen. I just want to admit defeat. I mean, it's about the taken part. Where are we going? What have I done? <laughs> oh. Said when no it... Olympian ever. <laughs> what have I done? I'm so That's glad it wasn't me that messed up. Can you see through oh, the paper? Really. Can you see through the paper? So I'm going to give you one point for that. It's not. It's not bad. It's not bad. Thank We're you. getting to the, the sympathy points. I'm glad. I'll take you yeah. back to front oh, and I'm right on the sympathy points. You can get. Thank well, you. well done. We're going to have the points added up and we'll see how you're getting on in the overall scheme of things. We're just going to pop a video on now to remind everyone what we're truly here for. And then we'll see how we're getting on in the competitive stakes. <laughs> feeling? Hi, my name's Nahid and I'm from Liverpool. When lockdown was first announced, I was more scared of being socially isolated than of the COVID violence than of the COVID-19 virus. I'm a full-time carer and I felt my life was quite lonely and with lockdown it was going to become even more isolated. I started cycling on my own because the roads were much quieter but that sense of isolation still didn't go. Through social media I came across a community cycle group uh, that was called Cycle of Life. They invited me to join their group of riders who go out every week. For me, that was a new lease of life. It was an opportunity and a chance to make new friends, see new things, and just do things and experience things that I hadn't before. For me, that was, you know, it was a real big de-stressor. I suffer from anxiety and PTSD as well. So it, it's really helped me alleviate my symptoms. Because of me going out and the changes my husband noticed in me, he's decided to take up cycling as well. We've been married more than 30 years and we've actually never done any activity together. So for us both, this is something that we both look forward to, we both relish that time that we can spend together. That's right, Cycling UK, bringing people together. Cycling it does bring people together. Lorraine, very, very, very quickly, but you have um, a cycling group, don't you, that you're very involved in? Yes, I want to big up Jungle Bellas and Fellas. Uh, under the... Uh, COVID regulations. So at the moment, we're Birmingham in, in tier three, so we can only have rides of up to six uh, people. Um, but in ordinary times, um, we we have all sorts of rides going on for absolutely beginners to those people who want to uh, do the next, take the next steps, and, and more advanced people as well. And the nice thing is, it's a reflection.
Asian, Birmingham, you've got you've got Asian and white people that are part and parcel of the group and a real representation of Birmingham and how diverse it is. And we're supported by We Are Cycling UK. Um, our local rep, if you like, is Vanessa. I'd like to big her up who uh, supports us in our activities and keeps us righteous um and uh yeah it's it's good fun and that we call joyful bellas and fellows because uh joy started the club basically uh she was new to cycling she'd come to cycling as a uh, as a late rider she wasn't like me who learned to ride as a child and she started riding and encouraged other people to come alongside her and from her we we now have uh, all sorts of rides um or um uh, all over the city and it's pretty amazing really so we wanted to acknowledge her uh, in the name of the group yeah inspiring and again as i've said before as cyclists we all know how important that sense of community is uh, for people that believe in this as a cause, that would like to see more people joining groups, getting cycling and um, breaking social isolation, then please do donate this evening. Donate five pounds text by texting cycle to 70970. Or if you want to donate 10 pounds, you can text cycle to 70191. Thank you for all the generous donations so far. Really hope that everybody's enjoying yourselves. And we're going to move on to the fourth and final round. Could we get all of our star guests onto the screen, please. I'd like to, I think that this is actually the best round of all coming up. Lorraine, I think you know what it is. I mean, actually, Lorraine, you're not going to be so needed for this one. You could go and make yourself a cup of tea, but I can't imagine you're going to want to. I am going to open my window on my advent calendar. So that's what I'm going to do and just you laugh. share this beautiful moment, Lorraine. Yeah. I mean, that's what we're all here for. Here. Oh, you want me to open it now? Oh, I'll do that. And I can show you what I've got. Is it points? Because I'd like some. <laughs> oh. Oh, it's Santa! <laughs> Who would have thought it's Christmas? I'm so surprised, Lorraine. <laughs> I mean, a pumpkin might have been a curveball, but <laughs> not that left me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, whilst well, you're enjoying your chocolate, Lorraine, I'm going to talk everyone through the rules of the next round, Truth or Lies. So you've all been given a statement that we happen to know is either true or false. Your statement will be put on the screen, you read it out. Everyone is then allowed to interrogate you, ask you whatever questions they want. You have to keep building that story up. At the end of the time limit, they will be asked whether they think your story is true or false. So if you've got your true or false cards, hold them up and we'll find out. As a team, you have to be united in your decision. If you are correct in calling out someone's truth or their false, you get a point. If both teams get it wrong and the person who read the statement has managed to fool both teams they managed to get the points and there are two points available for each of these correct answers so it's complicated to talk about i think we all understand the rules and we'll just get on with the game um who would like to start lorraine you can pick who starts if you want uh i'm gonna go with Orla. oh Okay, so all this statement is coming right up. And everybody ready with their questions. Orla, could you want to read out your statement, please? Yes. So I once had to present the live post-race show of the Tour de France wearing Bradley Wiggins' shoes, and he still doesn't know it. Okay, anyone got any questions for Orla? Go, Rebecca. Orla, what size feet is he? I knew that was going to be the first question, and I don't know. I would guess like standard guy size. They're not exceptionally small, they're not exceptionally large, but they were too large for my feet, that's for sure. Uh, what year was this, Orla? This is 2019 at the Tour de France, Ned. Shall I give a Are we just doing, are we just doing? Well, what stage was it? It was stage 19. 
which you may all remember or not. It was a stage that was curtailed uh, because of a snowstorm landslide thing. And was that why you had to wear his shoes? That wasn't why I had to wear his shoes, but it's why I was able to wear. It was why what? I was able to wear his shoes. So, can I? Can, what's the rules here? If I think I know whether this is true or false, can I just go? That is true. Is that? Yeah. Is that? Yeah. That's allowed. But then I guess I don't. I don't. I don't tell him until everyone's guessed. Is that right? Your teammate has to be in agreement with you as well, Ned. Sorry, Manny. <laughs> <laughs> is it a fib? Okay. Blue team have decided. Okay. What well, do we think, I, Adam? Okay, you ready? Uh, you can ask me those more questions. You can ask me more questions if you want. I've got, I've so, got a question. What, Orla, were your feet in vision? My feet weren't in vision, which is why I could wear them. There had something that happened to the shoes that I was knowing, wearing. Is anyone going to ask knowing that question? Orla, if you'd have put on them shoes, if you'd have put on them shoes, we'd have seen this on Instagram. Ooh, what's the shout? Except, <laughs> there's a reason I didn't want Bradley to know I was wearing his shoes. <laughs> so well, I, had, I, had a pair of, I had a pair of leopard print heels, and I don't usually wear heels at the Tour de France, or on location when I'm cycling, I usually wear wedges, but the heel broke. And so I was hobbling around with only one high shoe, and one flat shoe. And we so, tried. You do remember, Ola, I was at the Tour de France on stage 19. Yeah. I think we know the answer, Adam. You yeah. weren't there on stage 19. Oh, okay. Yeah, I remember it anyway. But you weren't in the truck all day. Did you look at my feet when you came back again? Oh, the story's we changed for the truck to being on air. Yeah, from the truck, or where we broadcast our breakaway from the truck. Ah, oh, right. Okay, I'm still going false. <laughs> okay, so red team are saying false. Blue team, do you want to put your, your answers up on the screen again to remind us where you are with this? Um, what, one second. Ola, what was Bradley wearing then? If, if he wasn't wearing his shoes, what else was he wearing? Bradley was on his bike, doing his Bradley on a bike. And okay. so we weren't sure whether Bradley was going to make it back to the truck on time. In fact, we're pretty sure that he wasn't going to. And Bradley always keeps a spare set of clothes in the truck for when he arrives at the end of the day because he's a bit sweat, hot and sweaty with um, his clothes. So I wasn't able to wear anybody else's shoes on air and the floor was incredibly wet. Oh, yeah. And so Bradley had a spare pair of shoes in his bag and I nicked them. One more oh, question right. allowed. Yes, Adam. Why didn't you wear Belle's shoes? Because then she wouldn't have had shoes to wear. And also her feet are smaller than mine. Bradley was the only person's shoes I could wear that meant that everybody had a pair of shoes and I wasn't making somebody else not wear shoes on a wet floor. <laughs> okay, that's it. That's the final question. Ty, and this is one that you can definitely play along with at home as well. It won't affect the answers. So if the audience want to get their trues and falses in, they can do so right now. Red team are saying false. Blue team are saying true. So either way, yellow team cannot get their two points because someone's got it right. Orla, can you do the big reveal? Manny! Oh. 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 you were on stage 19? Manny. No, I wasn't there. I was just trying to like... I know you were there! Cool <laughs> so, can I just say, can I just say, I mean, I know I this is... Really convincing. I know that um, you guys were both in the employ of a, of a, a, a different uh, broadcaster, but we were also there for the people I work for, and I threw away a pair of shoes that morning because it was so wet. So as soon as you said, stage 19, Tour de France, shoes, boom, I was there. Very good, Ned, I like your reasoning. Adam yeah, just yeah. doesn't believe me. That's the reason that he had for going to the I, I, like I also know how many pairs of shoes you take with you to these events. <laughs> <laughs> we knew. This is very true. And, and actually, Adam, I have to say the most insightful comment of the evening, if it had happened, as soon as my feet went into those shoes, it would have been all over the gram. 
That's true. <laughs> we knew it. We knew it. She has a finger goals. <laughs> Brilliant. All right. Fantastic. So that is two points to red team, zero points to blue team, zero points to yellow team. No, 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 no. The other way around. No, that's... <laughs> <laughs> oh, have I got it wrong? Paula, was it true Paula or false? It was, it was false. false. It was false. It was false. But I feel like I've taught false. myself the story so much now to get it in my head. It feels true. What is true? <laughs> What is the reality? All right, next, next statement. Next statement. Let's go to one from the yellow team. Um, Quizmaster Lorraine, who should we pick? Um, oh no, sorry, we've just had yellow team. Red team or blue team? Someone for red or blue? Uh, I'm gonna go with Manny. Oh. Okay, Manny, your statement. It's coming up on the screen now. My boss once started across the office. Has anyone seen Manny's trousers? He's just had an accident. I was sat in an ambulance parked out the front. Manny, I've never met you before, but I get a feeling already this is true. I just feel it's true. But, but I think we should prove before yeah. we commit. What happened? Why were you in an ambulance? Why was he not wearing his well, trousers? More like. I, I was on my way to work. And I got doored by an Addison Lee cab. The passenger opened the door. So did did he rip your trousers off? <laughs> <laughs> I got the sense. Yeah. <laughs> so you were riding to work. You were riding to work, mm -hmm. and you got doored by an Addison Lee <laughs> cab driver. Uh, yeah, passenger and then Addison Lee cab. Were you wearing like full you Monty say. Drivers okay. Velcro when they just flew off? What's that? What's that? Wearing what? Were you, were you wearing like full Monty style trousers that are only kept on by Velcro? Or how did they fall off when you were adored? No, I, I was wearing a full set of Lycra. So why did you need trousers? Well, so after um, I got knocked off, I was a little bit concussed, an ambulance pulled up um, and offered to take me to the hospital. But what I did- it Were you still wearing more. your cycling shorts or cycling leggings? Yeah, I was still in, in full lycra. Right. right, so you were clothed full lycra the shorts, like Everything full lycra, race kit, all that. And so um, the ambulance offered to take me back to the hospital to have me checked up, but I did not want to be discharged and then have to take public transport in my full lycra. <laughs> So I asked my boss, I asked the ambulance if they could drive me to work so I can collect my trousers from work so I can have a spare pair of decent clothes to wear. Okay, so just the logistical point of view, how do you yes. get your trousers to work before you get to work? <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Well, uh, that's a really good. What I do is I normally pack. I pack a set of clothes to work every every Friday. I I change my set of clothes. Yeah, so I, I, I normally have like I normally have like two or three pairs of shirts and a right. you know, two pairs of trousers, and I have it dry cleaned. Adam, you're too much of a pro cyclist. This is really standard to everyone else, I reckon. Who's <laughs> driving? Like all the time. I'm just trying to get tips. How do yeah. I have clothes everywhere so I can change my outfit wherever I arrive? All right, one more question. If anyone wants one, otherwise, please reveal your answers. Anyone got a question? Did anyone, no. did anyone find your trousers? Sorry, Rebecca, I hasn't. No, it's fine. Hand. You go. You go. Um, just Manny, does it bother you that you're seen in everyday life in lycra then? Oh, my, my boss was absolutely shocked. I was the only one that used to, that used to pull up in like right at the office. So the first time I did, my boss just went, Manny. <laughs> I had like to say, now it's, normal, it's normalized now. So I'm not the only one anymore. <laughs> okay, I think I'm ready. Do we have to confer, Katie? Do we confer? Yeah, I mean, I have to. If you, you want to confer, you can. Otherwise, please start revealing your answers. Audience at home, I know that you comment. Are People I, I, are divided about Paul and Manny. What's that, Anna? People are divided back at home about your your story, whether it's true or false. Are we ready to vote? Yeah, I think it is false. 
Has, has no one ever worn psych, um, worn full lycra on the London Underground? No. No. I don't think I dare. No. No, yeah. I've never done that. I'm fine with it. <laughs> you do get stared at a lot. I mean, I you say that you wore full lycra on the London Underground. You What's were happening? writing. No, oh, it's right. okay. Yeah, I think so. It's doing something, Adam. <laughs> Okay, yellow team are going true, red team are going false, which Good means you're not, gonna get, you're not going to get any points this time, Manny, but what is it? Oh! Manny had an accident and his boss asked where his trousers were. Oh, really? Brilliant. <laughs> Okay, let's have our story from the red team. Are we picking Rebecca or Adam, Lorraine? Oh, it's not working, is it? <laughs> <I'm gonna> <laughs> <have> <laughs> okay, Rebecca's statement coming straight up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Rebecca, can you read your statement? Yeah, um, I I didn't just bump into Tom Cruise. I had a lengthy conversation with Tom Cruise at the Lee Valley Velodrome. And anyone that follows me on social media may have seen me shouting about this. And I posted a picture next to him. All is nodding. She saw it. And uh, I almost ended up having a cameo in the upcoming Mission Impossible. When you say almost, Rebecca, I mean, I was almost a global <laughs> superstar, you know? How close are we talking here? Um, I was going to be an extra. Can can you tell me word for word what it was that Tom Cruise said to you? Get it, off. It, <laughs> it was actually Christopher, um, the director of Mission Impossible, that I ended up um, talking to about it. But it was with Tom. <laughs> oh, you're on. <laughs> look, at the, look at the caption there. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. all is not sure because she's seen the photo evidence. So can I just clarify? It wasn't actually um, a cycling event either. It was the indoor rowing championships. Which you know what? Rally. Brick. I think it might be time to reveal the answers, guys. I, I, I think I think Rebecca's trying to throw us off the scent. Well, <laughs> with, with okay. Not, one more question. One more question. Okay. Um. So how did it go from, so so actually, no, here's one, because the picture you posted with Tom wasn't really with Tom, was it? It was more a selfie with Tom in the background. No, it wasn't so a selfie. selfie. I was too embarrassed. So you were too embarrassed to ask Tom Cruise for a picture, but somehow he spotted your acting genius <laughs> when you were pretending not to take a picture that and he was like, need she's yeah. not taking a picture, but she is. Hola. Hola. In my movie. In How did the conversation start? How did the conversation start? Because um, Christopher, the director's daughter, Wilhelmina, was taking part in the youth championships at Brick, and Tom came over and asked me, when is her heat? And I was comparing. And the director said in my earpiece, Tom Cruise is stood next to you. And I didn't believe him, turned around, chatted to Tom, told him when the heat was, and it went from there. He said, I love no more like questions, no more questions. I love this first name basis that you're now on with it with Tom as well. Me, Tom and Christopher and Wilhelmina. Um Tom, can you reveal it, it, your answers? Tom, Manny, Tom, okay, Tom, Manny, Tom, because it's you. Go on, one more question. Go on, Manny. Becca, is, is Tom Cruise shorter or taller than you? Taller. That's a great question. That's why he didn't break. Are you a Scientologist? Oh, he didn't come with me. Time out. Time out. Time to reveal your answers. Yellow team, what are you going with? I don't know, Manny. Manny, I'm honestly, I'm so mortified by the debacle of the last one. You go for it, mate, and I'll, whatever you think. What do you think? Oh. Go on, Manny. I'm going false. I'm going false, mate. Okay. I'm tempted to tactically go through, which is so horrible. Oh, cool. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hey, should we? Let's go false. Let's yeah. go. Let's go. Yeah. For, so everyone thinks it's false. Rebecca, do the grand reveal. 
Oh, well. <laughs> oh, you're not, oh. you're not a liar. You're not a liar. But we did have a lovely chat about what I mean. That is true. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Katie, it's your turn. Let's read your statement off the screen. This is going to be brilliant. I know this is going to be brilliant. <laughs> Already it's good. Already it's good. <laughs> okay, um, if you can read this one out. <clears throat> um, I once had to share a double bed with my partner's ex-girlfriend <laughs> after a booking mix-up on a race trip. Mm. Okay. Did and you to put keep things on time, we're going to give 60 seconds for being able to ask questions. Um, it was... Before, and it wasn't before Instagram, it was before I had Instagram. Uh, although, re no, I also wouldn't. Uh, you, wouldn't I you probably wouldn't have put it on Instagram now. It was a flippant comment, really. It wasn't very scientific. <laughs> um, um, right. Okay. So, I mean, for context, this is quite a few years ago when we were booking our own race trips and things. And so, the like, it's just the person that had organized it. We all turn up and they go, sorry, everyone's in double rooms, not twin rooms. Um, and that's just how it had to go. There was no insistence on spooning or anything like that. It's just uh, it's the pickle we ended up in. What was said? What was said? Did nothing. I... Ne nothing. Oh, was, it, was, it, was it quite frosty? Well, you Did don't... you describe the atmosphere as frosty in the room? I think that's the best way to get through a situation like that. I think going too far the other way of making it overly comfortable when you're sharing a bed with somebody. So were you with uh, the ex, was it previous or current? Current. And it was the most recent ex. Oh. Yeah. Uh, so did, I don't know what to ask you without being indelicate. Wait, one more question. Wait, wait, wait. wait, wait. One, one, indelicate last question. Now. one last question, Katie. Did she, did, did she ask you how your partner is? How your partner's doing? Great question, partner. <laughs> I mean, uh, leave it as a simple question, and I can just interpret it as I, as I like. I'm going to go with the PG friendly answer and say, um, just I said he was fine. <laughs> fine. They're going to be indelicate, Anna. I think we should allow him a last question for that. I was just going to oh, ask okay. whether I was just going to ask whether you used the kettle in the morning and made a cup of tea. Indelicate. <laughs> <laughs> made amends. We. No. Straight out of bed, straight out the door, running down the hallway. <laughs> Led, Led. I'm, I'm right, liking, I'm... Time, time to reveal the answers. Red team, get your answer I... up. Blue team, get See, your Kate, answer up. Kate, Katie is unique in this in this particular regard, uh, in She's this unique. context, because because a Katie is a professional athlete, unlike any of the rest of us, and I include Rebecca and Adam in that. Um, and she is also by far the most clever. So oh, I'm wondering. Oh, no, really, no, really. And I'm so I'm just wondering whether Katie's just selling a very low-key, slightly personal, quite Ned, dark kind Ned, of. I don't know if you got the point of this game. Um, <laughs> but that is it. <laughs> I haven't got the point. Of, okay, so what would you, Manny? Manny, over to you. I, you got it right last time, mate. You know what? I'm inclined to go with true. All right. Yes, Manny. If 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 okay. Not on your team. <laughs> it. okay, it. it's a unanimous true story. Are you gonna be so, letting yourself in for losing two points here, Katie? You know, Anna, when we had this conversation, you said send through one true and one lie. And I really got the impression that everyone was gonna send through something true and I'd end up with I rehearsed my lie. I was so it's so on the bottom. <laughs> and I didn't think I'd have to read out the true one. So that was true. Hey! Oh, well done. Well done, everyone. What was, your lie? Lie? what was your lie? My lie was that um, I once held a national age group record for holding your breath. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> we, we, believe that. we would completely have believed that. We, we, would would we, wanted the juice. we wanted the juice. I actually just wanted to I find out more that. about that story personally. Okay, Ned, we're going to go with you now. Let's get your statement onto the screen. I once sat on I, I once sat on Greg Lamont's lap. Okay, why? And did you get the gifts you asked for? <laughs> Again, we're giving you around about six it a, seconds. It was um it was a yeah, I, I sat on his lap in a car driving down La Planche des Belfi. Who was driving? Greg. Uh, a, a, a colleague yeah. of yours, a Eurosport producer. 
Couple why, why did you have to sit on his lap? We know it's very busy getting down that climb, but why? I had been riding down uh, La Planche de Belfi after the stage, after we'd come off air, on a Brompton, trying to follow David Miller, and I had had a rear wheel puncture, and I nearly died. It was horrific. But after I didn't die, I then realised I had to walk, pushing my bike for the next four kilometres. And Greg, passing me in the Eurosport car, ordered his Eurosport driver to stop and uh, very kindly um, gave me some assistance. So I folded my bike up. Who was the driver, Ned? Do you some remember? Bloke, some bloke from France or Belgium. Some, some bloke. You know, you know, you know, a producer, you said. The, yeah, a, a producer-y type person. I don't know. I, I, you know, I was more focused on the fact that a, a three-time Tour de France winner had just offered me a lift than who was driving. Why was Greg not in his personal vehicle? Uh, I don't know. You'd have to ask Eurosports. Uh, I don't know, budget I cuts. Why were you sat on his lap, though, Ned? Why were you not sat in another seat? It was so full that there were actually no seats available and there was almost no room for um, sort of luggage in the back. So I folded my Brompton up, I had to squeeze it into the back and it was and there was quite a stink in the in the car actually because um everyone slightly resented my presence there not only had it held them up at the end of the day but also um there was now no room and i had to sit on someone's lap did you have a seatbelt on no I, i'm afraid i broke the french law guys i think time really has hat, gone on gone way over gone Orly, we'll let you finish that question and then you have to reveal your results well i actually think i should ask what year it was Aru? Aru? What year? Did, did oh. Fabio Aru win Aru, the yeah. uh, Porsche de Belfi? 2017, right? I think it was. 2017? Sounds about right. 2018? <laughs> Sounds about right. All <laughs> oh, right. Well, hang on. Is this a question about Greg LeMond's lap or whether a, a slightly questionable Italian climber? Time, time to reveal. Time out. Time to reveal. Red team, what are you saying? Yeah. Yellow team, what are you saying? Um, I, Ooh, I, you I, that it it and I reckon it's time to compliment. You think what? And what about at home? What is everyone saying? Did Ned Bolting sit yeah. on Greg Lamont's lap? True or false? What we're saying? I'm going to true. Well, I've got to. I've got to agree with you, right? Do we have to agree, Anna? You have to agree as a team. I mean, I don't want to look like I've not got a backbone, but I could very it's easily very close, Adam. You what? I said I could I could easily be flipped to true. Is that have you look at Ned's face just for a minute? I'm really nervous that Anna's head's gonna fall off. Let's pick one. Shall we say true? I'm I'm gonna say I'm gonna say false. Oh, right. Because, Stop because, me. because I think that um Greg Lamond in twenty seventeen was driving around in his own specially branded vehicle um with his own driver and with Kathy in twenty seventeen. So I don't think he was in the back of anybody else's car. Although plus they will feed in the library car up. Just doing a spanner in my own works. Let's go false anyway. They've gone true, let's go false. Yeah? Great, grand reveal. <laughs> we are cycling UK. Thank you. If you'd like to donate, <laughs> Adam. Yes. So, so, I, so I got in the car. Everything was true up until the last bit. I got in the car, and then um, Greg said, "Kathy, make room for Ned. Sit on my lap." Ah. <laughs> That makes a lot more sense. Unbelievable. <laughs> Cathy Lamont sat on Greg Lamont's lap so that I could get a lift down La Planche des Belles. Definitely, it was true then. That was absolutely not no, true. No, I don't think so. I, don't no. No. I think technically it was definitely false. Anyway, that leads us nicely into you, Adam. Time for your story. Oh my God, this I dread to think what this could be. <laughs> When I won the national championship, <laughs> I was asked by the mayor of Stockton on Tees if I wanted Adam, a street in the town Adam, named wake up. to celebrate the win. Wake up, you're dreaming. <laughs> <laughs> Burn. <laughs> oh man, who was the mayor? I don't know his name, do I? <laughs> Why do you just just the name that? No one knows his name. <laughs> Sorry? <clears throat> I said, what, Adam, what did you answer? I said yes. 
So why um, isn't there a street in Stockton on Tees called Adam Blythe well, Way? Maybe there is. Maybe there is. How do you know there isn't? Because then you would have said, when I won the national championships, I had a street in Stockton on Tees named after me. Was he drunk? <laughs> but how do you know I've not said that already? <laughs> <laughs> I might because, have said that let's, go, let's go back to the, the caveat you find in my story. Because if there was an Adam Blythe way, Adam Blythe, it 100%. would have been all over the gram. <laughs> yeah, have you not looked at my Instagram? <laughs> Can't avoid it. <laughs> yeah, well, you just have a little closer look on there. Okay, okay, so is there an Adam Blythe street? There could be, there could not be. <laughs> You don't sound like you're, you're playing it smart um, now. <laughs> I seem to remember, Adam, in that race, you were, um, I think, uh, was Mark Cavendish involved in the final phase of that race? He was, yeah. yeah so, he was. presumably, was he second? He was second, yeah. I, so, I did, so did, he get a silver, did he get a silver medal? He did, yeah. So he would have been on the podium, where presumably behind the podium in that general area, you would have had this conversation with the mayor of Stockton on Tee, right? Yeah, it was after the podium that it happened. The mayor, he presented the prize, then he had a chat to us after the podium. Was Mark uh, Cavendish involved in that chat? <clears throat> Mark Cavendish wasn't, because we, after the podium, we all had to go to doping control. She, and that would have been fun. Because that would have been amazing to hear Mark <laughs> Cavendish <laughs> yeah. listening, listening to the mayor. <laughs> The mayor of Stockton on tea suggesting. So, um, no, it tends to be when they're building new roads. So, the A34 in Manchester is filled with the good story way, McLean way, Pendleton way. So, like, if you get in a new street and they think, like, let's <clears> let's fill <throat> it with some feel good. So, it's Stockton on Tees. I, I know I should be asking Adam questions, but everyone else is it had like regeneration in the last few years that they'd be like, let's chuck around some street names. Yeah, they've had a lot of crits recently and then they've done up the town centre so the town that we actually finished on was it was just a normal tarmac road but recently they've had that repaved and all the city centre around it Katie, i love how you basically made that so yeah they've got mclean way they've got pendleton way so basically if adam doesn't have a street named after him then it's a bit rubbish yeah <laughs> totally flipped it uh, adam, i mean quick question did, did you yeah. accept the request yeah, I can neither confirm nor deny. You told us earlier you said yes. Yeah, yeah. You literally <laughs> said, I said yes. That was my first question. <laughs> Remember your lies, Adam. Amazing. Amazing. It's, Manny, it's that was brilliant. Like, Manny's, like, Manny's, like, Manny's like Colombo. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> One last thing, Mr. Blythe. <laughs> That's just great. Yeah, We've robbed wow. him. Manny, we have our own. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. well, I'm thinking false. I want to say we true. Just oh, I was going to go the other way, you know. And, oh, you think he's, he's, he's really double bluffed it? Well, I actually think that the mayor might have been drunk. Uh, I don't think it was a serious offer. I think he may well have asked him, would you like a street named after you? And then it went nowhere. Is what I think. Do you know what? In my experience at bike races, when mayors turn up on podiums at bike races, they are mostly drunk, as you say. They are also completely bored by what they've just seen and also completely uninterested in promoting cycling in any shape or form. They've just been told that they've got to go there. Yeah, they weren't promoting cycling, they were promoting me. <laughs> 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 Do you know what uh, you It's still false. It's because if we true. both say false and it's true, then Adam gets the points. So shall we go with true? What this, is like, this, is, this is like, <laughs> honestly, Orla, this is, for me, this is like Roglic and Pogaccia, right? This is all or nothing. This is stage 20. You know, he's he's Roglic, we're Pogaccia, basically. Come on. We what, go you think we should all go false? We go on. Go on. Play the long game, though. Kill him stone dead. On the Vuelta. I know Look it's not two, but... Uh, yeah, but this, this is the Tour de France right here. Okay, so blue team is saying false. Yellow team, can you reveal your answers? Let's go true. Let's go true. Sorry, We're doing it. Right. Adam. Yes! Oh! <laughs> yeah, how fine. Man! <laughs> On screen, high five. I'm living I give a tree to that. <laughs> yeah, sorry, guys. 
that, I don't. You know what? That was the final question to decide whether it was a tiebreaker or oh. not. I just had producer oh. Nick messaging me saying if everyone had realised that that was a lie, it would have had to be a tie. But it means that somebody has made it into the lead. We're going to do the grand reveal after this video. Oh. oh. <laughs> It is us. <laughs> so we're just playing a video now to show Hi, some... I'm Jenny Box, Head of Behaviour Change and Development for England at Cycling UK. All our lives have been affected by the COVID-19 pandemic, but for some people it's had a devastating impact on their mental health. In particular, some people have been left to feel lonely, unable to meet up with friends and family and vital support networks. For those people, social distancing has meant social isolation. Cycling UK has been putting on activities throughout the pandemic to try and reduce loneliness, helping people to connect with their communities in safe and responsible ways, adhering to social distancing guidelines. Our Big Bike Revival project, for example, has continued throughout the year, repairing bikes for people who may not otherwise have been able to afford it, helping them get back to employment, accessing healthcare, or having a way to enjoy their leisure time. Meanwhile, our community cycle clubs have been providing opportunities for people to meet in their community, providing access to long-term support and sustainable cycling opportunities in socially responsible ways. Both programmes have been shown to increase physical and mental well-being. With your support, we can continue to help more people to cycle, improving their physical and mental well-being, providing access to support through their local communities and providing them with the skills and knowledge to see improvements in their lives. Well, that is it. I really hope that everyone's enjoyed the entertainment this evening. Don't forget, it's all been in the name of a good cause. Um, so just before we do the grand reveal of who won tonight's Break the Cycle Christmas Games, there's a last opportunity to get some donations in to support some of Cycling UK's work. You can donate £5 by texting CYCLE to 70970, or you can donate £10 by texting CYCLE to 70191. All of our star guests have been appeared today free of charge in support of Cycling UK's work. So we've got to say a huge thank you to you guys. Massively, massively appreciate it. You've provided so much entertainment as well as backstories about the wonderful world of cycling that we all get to enjoy and we know and love. That's it. Thank you, Ned. Thanks for doing the producer's job. I mean, I don't even know why we have one. I can go home. Nick can go home. Nick, Ned can just stay here. This is brilliant. Um, so time is up. Time for the big reveal. Producer Nick, can you guess on the screen who is tonight's winner? Okay, so doing the maths, yellow team, yeah! Laura and Katie, who were the internet's favourite, have come up in third place. It's amazingly close, though, guys. People's Blue vote. Blue team, vote <laughs> with your massive lead that you had at the beginning, a huge lead, and you lost it all. You've got 22 points and beating you by just one point, literally in that very last question of the last round. It's the red team. It is Adam Blythe and Rebecca Charlton. Come on, Orla, show some. That's it. That's a Christmas That's what we want to see. Rebecca, Adam, speech. Yeah, I mean, you guys should be ashamed. Whoa! 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 whoa. whoa. <laughs> Not in the spirit of the season. Terrible. You guys need a book up on your cycling knowledge. Two of you work in cycling. Terrible. Katie, I'll let you off. <laughs> you suggesting? Sorry, Katie doesn't work in cycling. She's a cyclist. She does it for fun. Adam, Adam, on you're, on sliding, you're sliding down the public scale here. Yeah. You are with your disappointment. We won, we won the public vote. You've only, you've only won in points, Adam. Yeah, yeah you've won the actual game. 
You drop oh, back no. in. You need to pull these speeches back, otherwise I've got a feeling Lorraine Dixon, quiz master, is going to take this win away from you in one first week. So what yeah. are you I would just once again like to reiterate how much Adam and I appreciate how gorgeous Lorraine looks tonight. Yeah. And we will get you everywhere. Thank you so much, Lorraine. Oh, one minute is coming she back. Is coming back. <laughs> I'm just thinking back to Floyd Landis in 2006. <laughs> oh. I mean, that's what we're all thinking. You isn't should it? blame yeah. yourself for that, Ned. Give me a blow, Ned. High five, Rebecca. Amazing, amazing. Well, Rebecca Charlton, Adam Blythe, there are our winners today. Kate and Archibald, all attend me. Thank you so much for taking part because remember, that is what counts, even at the Olympics. <laughs> Ned Bolting, Manny Arthur as well. Excellent, excellent commentary and playing along. It's been hilarious. We've massively overrun. We were like, it'll take 90 minutes. Here we are, 45 minutes or so overrun. Really hope that the audience have enjoyed it at home. Thank you so much for all of your genera uh, generations, all of your generous donations. See what I did there? A linking of two words. That's it from us. Break the Cycle Christmas Games at Cycling UK. Have a wonderful holidays to everybody. Good night. <laughs>